So this lake that I've come to is is steeped in history, well over a thousand, you know, dating back to over two thousand years old. This place, so it's a very very historical lake and. It's quite a privilege really, not only being here, but to have the chance of catching some of these historical carp that have been stocked in here over 50 years ago. So that in itself is, is quite a privilege. So the first thing I did when I arrived was what you always do, you know, have a walk around the lake or attempted to walk around the lake one side of it you can't actually walk around because it's all overgrown and i did want to walk at least most of the lake so there's one bank that you can walk down and the wind was pushing down into this corner so we've walked up the far bank into where the wind's pushing and there was fish there fizzing away whilst i'm stood there looking out over the lake uh, one shown just to my right hand side in this set of lily pads. It was definitely a good stalking opportunity. So my plan was to set up base camp somewhere, sort of halfway along the bank preferably, and then try and stalk these fish that were obviously had taken refuge on, on the end of the wind in the hope to, you know, buy a quick bite. Right, so the stalking up the other end of the pond ended up fizzling out for me after about 15 minutes of getting the rod out. I don't think, I don't even think it was a cast. I waited for an helicopter to come over when I made the cast and they carried on fizzing for at least 10 or 15 minutes after. And then it just, it just stopped and they stopped showing in there as well. Obviously a fish showed soon as I walked in the swim. So I've set up two swims back from where they were i've gone out in the boat i've got an echo sounder with me and it, it showed quite a few fish still in that area so what i've done is i've got two rods sort of in the zone should we say up that end of the pond put them both out of the boat and i've got one down this margin here because the wind sort of swung round a little bit so it is blowing into the margin down to my right which just looks it just looks right for it so I've got another rod down there about 50 yards up the bank. Uh, how I've set them up is obviously on the boards. Reasons why I'm using a pod, I can't actually get the back bank sticks in between the two boards. So the pod's giving me a bit of security because I'm fishing locked up. So because I'm fishing obviously out towards them pads, I don't want a fish to take any line whatsoever. So I've wedged, managed to get the front in, so it's proper solid at the front. With the pod there, it's obviously mega, mega sturdy. So yeah, all the rods out in position. It does still look good for it. It looks good for an evening bite, definitely. So it would be nice to get an evening bite. If not, then that typical morning time, I suppose. So yeah, got Mia looking after me. I've, after hearing half of the stories from most of the guys here, she'll no doubt come back to life tonight, be reincarnated and be running around on the boards for the night. So, but that's another story. Anyway, rods are out in prime position. Looks really good for it, I must admit. And yeah, fingers crossed something's going to happen for us. So some of the history that I've heard behind this venue, some quite spooky, some really surreal, you know, there, it used to be a massive moat around a Roman fort. And rumors have it that King Arthur's buried only a couple of hundred yards away from the lake. And his famous 
Excalibur sword is supposedly in this lake. Obviously back, you know, hundreds of years ago, back in the Iron Age, there was a lot of sort of battles and stuff that went on here, a lot of death that went on here. And I've heard a lot of good sort of spooky ghost stories from other anglers that have fished on here that would never ever come back again. And, and the place was voted the most haunted lake in, in England. Frozen bottles in the middle of July, Roman ghosts and yeah, they, it, it actually got to a point where they got the lake blessed. Not once, you know, three or four times because, you know, it, the owner said to us, you know, some of the stories got a little bit out of hand and some of the things that he had seen himself, you know, spooked a lot of people. So they've actually had the lake blessed in the oak to uh, rid them Roman souls. So, so that in itself, you know, the history behind it is phenomenal. So my good friend Dean come down, we had a barbecue, a little bit of a social, you know, I don't get to see Dean very often and uh, yeah, it was um, great to have catch up, chew the fat a little bit. And Dean had set up a couple of swims down from me and he fished open water. So we sort of had two tactics on the go, you know, I was fishing the edge, you know, the, the, pa the padded line in, on one margin and Dean was sort of fishing out in open water and uh, yeah, the, the fish had basically moved from one end of the lake during the night and took refuge in front of Dean out in open water. And as soon as I woke up in the morning, there was fizzers out in open water and left everywhere. And within sort of 10 minutes of me getting up, Dean had had a bite. <laughs> Mate. What a lovely fish, eh? Yeah, he is proper awesome. <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> yeah, to think this is probably getting on for 50 years old, this fish, which is um, just brings a whole new fame level of respect from, doesn't it? Yeah, mate, yeah. To think sure. it's been sort of swimming in here longer than I've been alive is just <laughs> absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. Well done, mate. Yeah. Epic. How big was he? Uh, just shy of 29, this one. Literally an ounce shy of 29. Oh mate, awesome. I want one of them. That is what I want, definitely. He is so cool. Well, I've longed it out in the swim all morning and nothing's happened. So, sun's eye in the sky now. It's red hot and getting a bite off the bottom doesn't look like it's gonna happen. So what I'm gonna do is get me mixers out, me floating pellets out. I've got a couple of loaves of bread as well. So I'm gonna get in the boat, go out into the pond, put a few mixers out in the middle of the pond, but there's a lovely padded and reed lined bank that I'd imagine a lot of fish are sitting in. So I'm gonna creep over in the boat, see if there's anything on the tide. If I can see a fish, then I'll fish for him just with a single bit of bread. But if I don't see anything, then I'll just put a few floating pellets along the pad line, sit back and hope that some of them start taking. I can't sit in the swim and just, you know, sit behind motionless rods. I've got to try and make something happen. So that is the plan. I've got my rod sorted, got my bait, got my bottle of water. Let's go. fished it really well but I sort of cast out in amongst these reeds and the line hooped over the reed and I sort of like gently lowered it down onto where these fish were so all the line was up and out of the water and it just looked mega for it 
and oh, it was so exciting, you know, my heart was going like, man, there was fish moving around in these pads all around the boat, and one fish come up to the side of the boat. Oh my God, there's a fish right next to the boat here. <laughs> and I was in my element, you know, just really, really enjoying that part of fishing. What, what better way to fish than in a tin boat moored up next to a load of carpy looking lily pads and fish swimming all around the boat with a bit of bread and a 10 foot rod so yeah it's exciting it'll be even more exciting if i could hook one and unfortunately it would they just i'm sure they just didn't you know even clock that it was food or knew how to suck in a bit of bread off the surface, even the roach, you know, there's plenty of roach in here. Even they were sort of swimming past the bread, like, I don't know what that is. You know, when nine times out of 10, when you put a bit of bread in, you just get, gets mauled by roach. But even they, you know, didn't even know what it was. And I sat there quite deflated, you know, as great as it was to have, you know, be sat in this tin boat on this historical lake with all these carp and these pads and, I was gutted, I couldn't catch them off the surface and they really, really wasn't up for it. So did a lap of, lap of the lake in the boat and yeah, the total change of plan for the next night ahead. I only have got 48 hours on the lake, but I'd learned a lot in that 24 hours. Obviously, didn't like, didn't like off the surface. Zigs, I've, you know, was a bit of a no-go. Just didn't feel right for the zigs. So Dean had caught hard on the bottom, you know, using, uh, using a little snowman rig on the bottom. So that was the plan. Fish all three rods, or well, no, to fish two rods out in open water. Uh, one with a 360, one with, because uh, 360 sits mega, mega low anyway. It's a real silty pond, so, you know, it's pretty much on the deck anyway. The other rod, a fish with a D-rig on a little wafter. And then that first morning, I'd seen a fish show to my left-hand side two or three rod lengths off of the lily pads down to my left. So I thought, you know, if he turns back up the next morning, it's worth having a rod there. So... Yeah, two rods out in open water, one rod down to my left. Didn't overdo it with the bait, just put a few fish mills out, you know, a few SLKs around, around my 360 rig, my wafter rig, and then did the same with the margin rod and sat back and felt just as confident as I did the night before. And yeah, hoping and praying that something would happen. That night, I started getting liners on the left-hand rod, the one down, down by the pads, and that sort of kept me up for, you know, you know, every couple of hours, I'd get a couple of knocks on that rod, which was probably the pike or the roach sort of milling around in, in the pads to my left. But every time I sort of woke up, I was thinking, oh, you know, I've not had a bite yet, please, please. And then, you know, a couple more hours later, and I oh, still not had a bite, because Dean said to me, you know, you do get quite a lot of bites in the night time here so I was really praying that something would happen and then fell asleep next minute I've heard I've heard the clip go on the rod like that snap and then whack you know the the rod, middle rods hooped over and it's just peeling line sort of run out real blurry eyed from sort of a rough night's sleep and yeah finally I was hooked into one Finally hooked into one on this very historical pond that I've dreamed of hooking one on. So, yeah, middle rod's gone, which is the rod that I put out first yesterday. The fish has gone into these pads here. Jeez. Worrying. I might jump in the boat, I really don't want to lose this. 
or the only ghost experience I've got at the moment or horror story is the fact that this fish is snagged up and I want to get in the boat to get it out. <laughs> well, so the fish has wrapped itself around some of the marginal pads here. So yeah, I'm going to do what, what I do best and jump in the boat. So let's go. <laughs> Wait. Oh, he's diving under the boat. Art's going H. <laughs> Let's get control of this boat. Get out into this open water here. And get away from them pads. Oh, he's a common. Hey, he's going under the boat. I just want to get him in there. Please, God. Please, Arthur. God, it's a proper hard fight, in my Angry common. Here we go, this time. Please, please, please stay up. Please keep him. Yes! <laughs> yes, H! Sweet. So right on cue again, same time as yesterday really. And if I was a betting man, I'd say this is probably the oldest fish in the lake. And one of the angriest as well. But say hello to one-eyed Willie. <laughs> About that for a proper old character of a mirror. What a fish. To say this is again, without doubt, one of the plus 50s club I'd have thought. And uh, yeah, to get one again is absolutely fantastic. I'm absolutely over the moon. What a wicked character. Yes. Right, I'm going to slip him back now and we'll pop round to Lee's swim because uh, he's had one as well. He is absolutely mega. Probably going to be one of my most memorable catches, this one, from a lake that he's definitely been born and bred in. The lake's never had a stocking in 50 years, so he's definitely not 50 years old, but he would have been born in this lake and grown on to be this fine looking creature that he is. And he went 20 pound, three ounces, but the weight totally irrelevant from a place like this. I am truly, truly buzzing to catch this carp. Thank you. Yes. I've been buzzing from the minute that I've got here. You know, it's, it's just, it's just magical here. I don't think, I, I don't even think the cameras would capture how mag magical this place is. So, yeah, I have been buzzing from the minute that I've got here to the minute that I'm going to leave, you know. I'm I am gutted that, that I'm going, but, you know, just to catch that, that one fish has just been, it's just meant everything to me, you know. For weeks I've been thinking about this fish in this lake, and, yeah, just to hold one of its, you know, treasured, you know, residents that live in here has been magical, and, yeah, I have been buzzing, definitely buzzing. 